Do you like what you see? If you do, I am so glad you're here. This is an update on my Vanda totem pole, my Vanda Chao Praia, my Papilionante. An update because a while ago I made a video about what do orchids do when they panic, how they fight for survival. One of the things that they do is they push out blooms and this Vanda Chao Praia has already, due to that panicking survival trigger, after being broken in two places by falling over because the stand fell over during a storm, I already had three spikes. The first time it ever bloomed, so those were real stress blooms. But hey, I got to see the blooms and they were a little bit off and a little bit wonky. Never mind, we got to see the blooms. This is now the fourth spike. Surprise, surprise. I couldn't believe it when I saw the spike coming out. Really pleased because I don't think this is now a stress bloom. The blooms are just much more deeper and richer in color. And I'm gonna look at the footage from the previous blooms and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. But this is what I bought the Van der Chau Praia for. And it is so close in the viewfinder, what I see as a color, as to what I see in real life. There is a rich, rich magenta purple and dark fuchsia in this. Look at that lip. Look at that. Oh, I'm getting distracted. But I wanted to really show you as well, apart from the blooms, how this specific orchid, the Chao Praia, is doing after it had the mistreatment from my half, not being able to secure it properly, and it broke in two places. Let's look at her, see how she's doing right now. So we're at the crown right now. Look at that, desiccating. That is cracked through. There's nothing really able to go up there anymore. It's trying to grow another leaf, but it is desiccating. You can clearly see the ridges in the leaves, which is a shame. I was hoping to get roots up here. And what I'm doing to encourage that is spraying a lot with seaweed at 40 parts per million, 6.3 pH. I want to see if I can encourage some roots up there. You know why? Why shouldn't it happen up there if it's happening down here? Look, <laughs> two side shoots. This is an awkward angle. Let me see if I can get you straighter and let's have a look. This is the second crack right here. And that I stuffed full with cotton wool drenched in dragon's blood because this crack is all the way through as well and I could literally separate the top from the bottom. There's nothing going on. I can actually see my finger on the other side. I don't know if that's clearly visible in the viewfinder, but you can see through it. But it stopped any possible infection, and I'm going to do a comprehensive video about dragon's blood, so we'll get to that. But that's what I did right there to stop any possible infection. And I still sprayed on the regular to keep that part hydrated, to keep the roots above that aerial hydrated, even though there was a massive gash in my orchid. So that's break number two. Let's get back to the subject though. Look at my two branching ones right here. When orchids panic, the fight for survival is on and we got a first time bloom out of her. Yep, they were stress blooms, but now she is also fighting for survival by growing two branches out of where the break was. And that is my question and that is why I'm pushing the top part with a lot of seaweed I'm hoping to get the top part to grow roots, just like down here. Look, beautiful roots coming out right there as well. The same happening on the other side. Got two roots coming out on those plants. And that to me is amazing. I am so happy. It's gonna take a long, long time before we even see blooms on, on these side shoots. But having said that, they're growing great. They're growing strong, even though the upper part is looking a little bit weak. I don't see any issues in attempting to save this orchid because I have plenty of aerial roots to contend with. Look at them all. I'm not managing to keep the root tips growing. Super dry winds at the moment. It's a struggle. But you see, I've tied her up. I don't want her to fall again. We've come this far. But you see how she is desiccating on the way up. Yeah, and there I expect, and I'm hoping, she will push roots. How about the Papilionante? 
Let's have a look-see. If we can get past these gorgeous blooms, the color matches. It's perfect. But right here's the Papilio nanthi. You see that little stick there? Really shouldn't have this orchid in my climate. It's a challenge. She would be so much more vigorous if she had the right environment. But she's okay. She's not the prettiest of orchids, but she's okay. And she's going to spike again. And you know, that's all we can ask for. An orchid that will grow even without the best of conditions. Look at those roots coming. My climate is too dry for her. Unfortunately, I had never contemplated that that would be a problem. I just thought, warm to hot grower, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I didn't think of the humidity at the time. Look at all those roots coming. And those, this is her third flush of roots. So here's the thing, the seaweed going in up here a lot is having positive effects down here with my papilionante and the root production is more impressive than it's ever been in the past years. So there's that. Live and learn, huh? One orchid benefits from the tragedy and almost demise of another. And now it's time to give her another good spray down. I apply the seaweed solution late afternoon, about 5 p.m. Now is not the time. This is just to help with the humidity. Keep the microclimate around the orchid at agreeable humidity levels, which I cannot have naturally. So there's a lot of spraying that goes on this time of year for me. I make sure that the back part, you see the hedge there, I make sure that gets a little bit of a soak as well. All the weeds and vines there are growing beautifully, but keeping that a little bit wet as well helps a lot with maintaining the humidity a little bit longer. If you see a callus on any of my videos where I'm showing a bloom or something, it's because I normally spray with my right hand. And that is where the sprayer sits. It's a predominant feature throughout the warmer months of the year. <laughs> so I'm going to continue spraying this orchid, enjoying her blooms while I do. Oh, let me update you on the fragrance. Either my brain is playing tricks on me because she has that gorgeous violet color, but that is what I'm detecting. Violet, a fragrance of faint violets. It's beautiful. It's not very obvious, but it's beautiful. I love it. I hope you enjoyed this little update on my Vanda totem pole. The signs of some positive activity, which we will be monitoring for the rest of the year and to see if I can get roots to grow up there in the crown. That would be awesome. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support on my channel, for watching, for commenting. So appreciate it. Stay safe and take care. Bye.